Fish eat fish, birds eat birds, and carnivores mainly eat herbivores, which seems to be the nature of the wild. But sometimes animals get creative, and we get to see things like fish hunting down birds as well as birds snatching up foxes. But wait, what's that plant doing to that frog? That can't be right. Let's get into it. If you're like most people, then photosynthesis might be the only source you know plants get food from, barring the non-green plants that get nutrients from dead and decaying matter. But are there a few plants that feel there should be more to life than feeding on boring sunlight or just dead matter? <laughs> Why, yes there is. And they've developed an insatiable thirst for the living evolving straight out of your nightmares. I mean, they've evolved into carnivores. Yep, it's just as crazy as it sounds. Carnivorous plants are a thing. Imagine walking in a park, sniffing a sweet scenting flower, only for the flower to start nibbling on your nose. I'm gonna chop the heck out of this ficus Leroy. We wouldn't like that very much. Luckily, we're too big a prey to be on their menus. So where should I begin to talk about these guys? Oh yes. Let's start with the one so notorious it's been featured in countless science fiction movies, series, games, and even books. Charles Darwin even described them as the most powerful plants in the world. And it's not hard to see why. The plant I've been going on about is none other than the infamous Venus flytrap, aka the living death trap. One trip into its attractive petal-like trap and it's adios for any prey. Endemic to only north and some parts of South Carolina, these guys can be found in bog-like coastal areas with about 80% humidity, especially where the soil quality isn't all that great. As a result, they depend on their super-advanced two-lobed traps with hair-like extensions for nutrients. What do I mean by super-advanced? Well, their traps only close if two hairs are touched in succession, within seconds of each other. This eliminates any false alarms that might be caused by raindrops or random objects. But when any unsuspecting insect gets dangerously close, they close and the digestive juices are released to break down the insect trapped inside. In an unexpected twist, mature Venus flytraps can eat meat. When the opportunity arises, they have no problem digesting small birds, rodents, and even frogs. As long as it fits inside the trap, it's on the menu. However, Venus flytraps have been observed to not eat their pollinators. It's as though they give their pollinators special don't eat me tags that prevent accidental trapping. Are we sure these guys can't see? They might be quick to trap prey but are slow to digest and can't digest everything. What happens is that after they've gotten the required nutrients from any unfortunate prey, albeit spending days breaking it down, they open their traps and spit out whatever's left. But there's a guy who doesn't need to spit out waste. In fact, they physically can't do so. Pitcher plants don't have traps, but possess an unassuming trap of their own in the form of colorful pitchers that lure prey into their sweet, nectar-filled walls. First off, this carnivorous plant relies on the digestive fluids inside the pitcher to break down the prey it captures, so they've evolved specialized hoods, or lids, to prevent the rainwater from getting in and diluting their fluids. But that's not its only party trick. Have you ever noticed how colorful or patterned the hood can be? That's because it's designed to catch the attention of insects, which are then lured into the pitcher by the scent of nectar produced by the plant. The lid isn't the only trick up their sleeves. Once the victim has fallen into the belly of the plant, they find the inner linings of the pitcher to be smooth and slippery, and the insect, or whatever, falls into the liquid, becomes trapped inside where it eventually dies and rots. Enzymes act on it, breaking it down and providing nutrients for the plant, which isn't available in the soil. By the way, did I mention that the pitchers also contain hairs pointing downwards to make it burdensome for prey to exit? Well, they do. They probably got this idea from watching how the Egyptians of old made booby traps. Three, two, one, turn. Shit! Now, in a strange twist of evolutionary events, some pitchers modified themselves into makeshift toilets. Wait, hear me out. These pitchers attract critters such as tree shrews to come and lick the nectar secreted on the underside of the lid. By doing so, the unassuming shrew is placed in a position where their booty lines up perfectly with the plant's opening. 
The shrew gets a tasty treat, and the plant receives a significant source of nitrogen when it's used as a toilet. Frogs also set up shop in pitchers, but more for hiding from predators, paying rent via their feces. One thing that all these carnivorous plants have in common is that they usually grow in places where the soil lacks nitrogen or is in minimal quantity. So they turn their efforts to snagging meaty morsels and extract the nitrogen from said prey. The next plant has been dubbed the mosquito slayer because of how much of it they consume. They're also known as the flypaper plant, and for good reason. Sundews are found in marshy habitats where there's an abundant supply of their chosen meal, like a veritable gold mine. They also feed on other insects that fall victim to their juicy looking dewdrops. These plants have long tentacles that protrude from their leaves, all with a sticky gland at the tip. These droplets look a lot like dew glittering in the sun, hence the name. Shiny droplets do more than just reflect sunlight, they're powerful adhesives used by the sundew to trap insects. Once an insect comes to try out their sweet nectar, it immediately gets stuck and the nearby tentacles coil around the insect and literally squeeze the living daylight out of it. They also have the strangest partner in crime, named the assassin bug. Assassin bugs live rent-free on the sundew, are immune to its killer fluid, and share the spoils of any insect caught. The entire process of capturing and killing prey can take as much as 15 minutes, while digestion takes way longer. It could be up to a few weeks. Sundews may be slow to capture prey, but there's a plant that doesn't mess about when it comes to incapacitating its catch. It takes only a few milliseconds for this guy to suck its prey in at up to 4 meters per second. Now that's fast, especially for a plant. Bladderwort, which sounds like a cool superhero name by the way, has a complex suction trap filled with water and enzymes for digesting their prey. Bladderworts are famed for their pouches which are common to over 200 species. They live in various places ranging from marshes, streams, and waterlogged soil on every continent except Antarctica. They're all characterized by these pouches and beautiful flowers of various colors that resemble snapdragons. These sacs are usually underwater, and they're used to suck in prey at turbo speeds. They possess hairs on their bladders, which trigger the sac when any prey touches it. The sac lid is lifted, and any prey within range is sucked in while the lid is slammed shut immediately, sealing the delicious snack inside. They have a long menu including, but not limited to, small animals like water fleas, mosquitoes, crayfish, tiny tadpoles, and even insects along with their larvae. Talk about wiping out an entire generation. Although the bladder wart has the smallest trap of all the carnivorous plants, it boasts the most sophisticated. Remember how I described the Venus flytrap being nightmare fuel to insects living within its vicinity? Now picture stacking 10 to 15 of them on top of each other without their roots and shrinking the whole thing to about six inches and then sending it to live in water. What you'll get is a water wheel plant. The water wheel plant is an aquatic carnivorous plant that depicts what a Venus flytrap would look like if it had more than one trap. They have analogous underwater trapping systems that trap small prey like eelworms and daphnia that venture into their traps and trip over their trigger hairs. These rootless, free-floating plants have small translucent flytraps that appear at the end of broad petiole. These traps also have hair-like bristles that help prevent any false alarm that may be caused by other aquatic plants. Within the traps lies even more bristles, which cause the trap to slam shut and also secrete acids that break down a prey's soft tissue and make it ready for absorption. Once digestion is complete, we all know what follows. We'll catch you later.